And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at If Wishes Were Fishes. Now this is an older game from Rio Grande Games designed by Peter, Peter Sarra and Michael Adams. And the thing about If Wishes Were Fishes that distinguish it probably above any other game is that it comes with these rubber worms that look like little bait worms. And I can imagine the designers sitting around with these worms and they're like, oh, how can I use these in a game? And that's how they designed the game. Now I don't know if that's how the game was designed, but that's that's what it feels like. Now, does that mean the game is bad or good? Well, it's still my collection, so it must be somewhat good. Let's take a look. Here's a picture of the board and on the board there's different markets that will take different kinds of fish and the, and the fish are you know kind of silly you can see here is a an angel fish and over here is a star fish and over here uh, we have all the different fish there's the clown fish okay so each market wants a very specific kind of fish you also see there's some buyers at some of the markets as the game starts. The black ones are worth one point, the gray ones are worth two, and the white ones are worth three, and they're different sizes to show that. And then there's a scoring track here where players will keep track of the dollars or points that they get as the game goes by. Now players will be getting a handful of six worms at the beginning of the game. And on a player's turn, they can sell a fish or they can take a fish. When they take a fish, you have to take a fish that's closest into the shore. Or, if you want to take like this one for example, you put a worm on every one that you're skipping over, and then you take that one. And then these all slide down, and so eventually, somebody's going to want to take one of these, because if they do so, they're going to get all the worms that are on it. Or else, you will be out of worms, and you'll have to take the first card, uh, and in which case, then you would get all the worms that are on it. Now, when you take a fish, you have two options. You can either keep the fish and put the fish in your boat, or you can use the wish on the fish here. Uh, sometimes you don't have that option, that's a double fish, so that one counts as two fish. But when you put a fish in a boat, each player starts the game with a card of their color that basically acts as two boats. And so I can put a fish in here or a fish in the other side, so I have room for two fish. And I will be able to sell fish as an action. Uh, instead of taking a fish, I can sell a fish to its proper market. So let's say I sell the monk fish, which I have here, and I have one of these on my turn. Every fish normally sells for $2, but this buyer here is plus one. So I would sell a fish there for $3, and I would put a fish there of my color. Now what I want to do as the game progresses is have multiple buyers at my market here. This fish would sell for two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. And so that's the best place to get fish. And you sell fish by using them for their, their wishes. Or you can sell them by doing the action. Now when you sell fish as an action, you can only sell one fish. But if you use this wish here, this will let you sell as many fish as you want for money of one kind. This one lets you sell fish of one kind as if they were another kind. So I could sell all my clownfish and say that they were angelfish. I could sell my starfish and say they were kingfish. This wish here lets me move one of the little black uh, meeples one to three spaces and I can sell all fish of one type. And this one lets me move one of the gray ones. This one lets me move one of the white ones in the same thing. This, if there's a bunch of guys in one spot, I can move them all to different locations, and now so I get $3. This gives me an extra boat. You just turn the card over, and it becomes another boat that you can have to keep fish. Here you get a dollar for every worm you have. So if you're one of those people who collects a lot of worms as the game progresses, this can be useful. You have to give one worm to every other player when you're done, but still, it's a way to get a lot of points. And so those are the different cards that wishes that players will be having. Now. 
As players will sell fish, they need to keep an eye on the market card over here. If you see that the big number there shows a four, that means when any market has four fish in it from being sold. So let's say this market here has uh, green and then we add it an orange and two red. Now this market is now closed. We will take this card, we will put it in the market to show that this market is now closed and whoever has the most fish here, which in this case is red, will get seven points. And then the second most fish will get three points. The new market card is now a five and it has eight and four. And as the game progresses, you can see there's six, seven, and that card is nothing. So there's only four of those cards. Now, when these cards are placed out, that market's closed. And if you can still sell a fish to that market, if you wish, but when you sell fish to that market, it must go in the trash heap instead of going to the market. And the game will end in one of two ways. Either all the market cards will be out on the board or the trash heap will be filled. If the trash heap's filled, then whoever has the most fish in the trash is going to lose points and the second most will lose points. Otherwise, if the markets end first and the game just ends, whoever has the most worms will get some bonus points and the second most worms will get bonus points. And then whoever has the most money slash points is the winner of the game. Now I'm gonna be honest here. If Wishes Were Fishes is a decent game. I don't know that I would put it really in the echelon of this is a great game. So then Vassal, why do you keep it? Because you say you only keep great games. The games that I have around here, I only have so much space. Games come in and out all the time. Why keep this game? Are you keeping it because of the purple worms? Um, yeah. Uh, but it's not just that. The whole game, I like the theme of this. If you take a look at the inside of the box, uh, I don't keep box inserts very often because they're annoying and they take up room. But I like this one because if you see here, it looks like a boat. Well, that's, I don't know, I, I like that. I like the fact that you have these little fish tokens. I like the fact, the artwork on the fish cards. And I like the fact that you're selling fish at a fish market. It makes sense thematically. You have people walking around the fish market buying fish. And essentially it's a Euro game where you're trying to sell the fish, but it works. See, people get on my case all the time because they say you're always get, you know ragging on, on, on Euro games. And I am, but I like them when the theme fits the gameplay. I'm not just shoving cute around here I'm taking my fish and I'm selling them at the market and getting points for selling fish that people want at that point in time I'm using my resources that I have to go out deeper in the water and get fish and I like the idea of taking a card and saying am I gonna keep this as a fish or am I gonna use the special ability on it the wish I like the story behind the game where you take the fish and the fish says throw me back and I'll give you three wishes and you're like Nah, you look pretty tasty. I'm going to keep you. That, and that works. This game is a lighter game uh, than many. It's two to five players, and I found that it works pretty well with all sets of those players. Uh, it says on the box 40 minutes, which I think is a reasonable time. And this is fits in the category sometimes of gateway games. This is a game that I bring out to, to play with new players. I find myself having to explain the wish cards again and again and again and again and again, but that's not a big deal because you just say, hey, these are the cards that are out there. This is what each one does. What would you like to do? And meanwhile, you see people doing what I'm doing right now and sitting there playing with the worms or stacking their fish. The game is just a very good visual effect. So with that strong visual theme, add it to fun, light gameplay. It's not a difficult game to play. And uh, a game that actually offers some looking ahead and saying, okay, this fish is doing well. What am I going to do? Where will I sell my fish? What fish am I going to sell? Which fish are going to get me the most points at the end of the game? Uh, that adds to it. So it's a middleweight, maybe closer to a light middleweight Euro game, but one that I enjoy quite a bit. If wishes were fishes. And you know what? I'm still going to keep it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.